back to the law live audio wrestling chris we have a big pay-per-view coming up in a couple weeks uh we are going back across the pond again we're going even farther across the pond we're getting we're going across the pond we're getting on a train and we're going to ride for a very long time for our pay-per-view coming up king and queen of the ring what are your thoughts going into this pay-per-view yeah it's going to be very hot there uh, they're going to the Jeddah Superdome in Saudi Arabia, May 25th. And listen, we already know now what the quarterfinals scheduled are going to be. And we know what a few of the non King of the Ring matches are. Uh, what do you want to get into first here, buddy? Um, let's look. Well, let's let's start at the main event and work backwards. That's how right. I love doing it. So undisputed WWE championship match. It's obviously Cody Rhodes. Uh, the guy who, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, has Cody Rhodes now defended this belt more times than Roman did in his entire existence of yep. being a champion? Yep. Like, I thought that this was going to be one of those belts where it was just like, oh, a special attraction belt, right? But No, no he's defending it. Cody is working. And now he's going to go out there and he's going to have some fun. And he gets to work against a guy, a young kid and Logan Paul, who is just skyrocketing to start him. He's got to be the very first person. I think who's a worker that's in the ring, wearing Louis Vuitton gear, wearing Gucci clothes. You know what I mean? Like he's wearing like, like $10,000 worth of gear and getting beat up in it. And you're like, Holy crap, this kid is on another level. Like he doesn't need to be there. He wants to be there. And that's why he's there. Here's and it's one of these matches where it's champion versus champion match. And I mean, you gotta you gotta think that there's no way that Logan Paul is beating Cody Rhodes. Cody isn't turning anything in this this early into you know his uh his run as champion. So that means we're gonna have Cody Rhodes with another belt. Is this what we're getting at here? Or or is somehow are we gonna finish off a pay-per-view with a shit fest? With a schmoz, with some bull pucky. I think we're going to see Uncle Howdy. Yeah, you think that's where uh, uh, they're going to have to do something? But you may even see The Rock show up. No. No, I know that he's supposed to be off and he's doing his movie and all this stuff, but I, I don't know. that That's a special kind of place. When they're over there, they really do have to deliver names, right? Like, you know, we can talk about this when we get into the UFC thing, but I think we're about to start seeing super weekend shows. Okay. And yeah. I think stuff like this, like when they, because this is a one-off, mm -hmm. I guess it's a two day thing, but it's a one-off for them. And in terms of an event, I think you're going to see something big here. So if they schmoz the finish, I think it's going to be a schmoz with a massive debut or a massive re-debut, et cetera, et cetera. I think it would have to be some kind of like, cause you got to remember, Still, especially over there, this crowd is going to want to go home happy, right? So you've still got to send them home happy in some way, shape, or form. And having that main event match end in a schmoz with there's no champion and everybody keeps their belts. Okay, but that's going to piss a lot of the fans watching on TV, don't you think? Well, we have, uh, so leaving that match and going on to the next, we have Becky Lynch uh, taking on Liv Morgan. Right. AEW bound Becky Lynch. Well, I mean, that's all rumor and hearsay now, but we can always start that rumor. I'm okay with it. Right. <laughs> she's not on contract. Should she yeah. not just go? We talked about this a bit off of there. Sure. Should she not just take a payday, go over to the competition for a minute, get a $10 million payday for a couple of years? Does she not have an anchor over in WWE that she's fine? Like, if there's a couple things she can hang her hat on over there and go get a payday, spend more time at home, work less. It doesn't have to make sense if you're getting paid. It, do you think WWE would let her do that? I don't think they, I don't, it's not about a let. It's if she's not on contract and she hasn't signed a new deal, let's right. say she the title she loses the title sooner well, than later. Why I'm, not go over there and get a payday? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that her contract would have probably been written before all of those new clauses with the no compete stuff came out, right? So I'm sure that they probably do have a first right of refusal. At least they have a first right of refusal. I mean, there's got to be there's got to be stipulations put into these contracts now to avoid that very Alundra Blaze thing because you're exactly right. I mean, you could see Becky Lynch just be like, "Boop, hey, here's me on AEW with a fucking WWE belt." 
Well, Tony would have her coming out doing that Irish dance that she did in NXT. These girls big man come out and dance on his TV without working. So I'm telling you, that's the place that it, you know we're all we're all our own people, and you got to pay your bills at the end of the day. And ten million is a lot easier to pay than three million over three years. Right? Dude, the amount of money that is being pumped out of Saudi Arabia just into TKO now is unreal absolutely baffling how much that they're filtering through the wwe and now into ufc as well it's crazy but anyways so then we go let's go to the actual queen and king of the ring we don't need to talk about the ic match the ic match is already what it's going to be um all right so we got quarterfinals that have been scheduled right and you've and you want to do the guys or the girls first let's do the guys first Ladies first, sir. Okay. All right. So the quarterfinal scheduled for the ladies yes. is uh, Io Sky and Shayna Baszler. Okay. Uh, Lyra Valkyria against Zoe Stark. Mm-hmm. Jade Cargill and Nia Jax. Okay. And finishing it off, Bianca Belair and Tiffany Stratton. Well, that second last quarterfinal match you just said right there has got our winner in it, our queen. Our new queen, the lovely, the most amazing specimen in the WWE right now, Nia Jax, will be winning the Queen of the Win, the Queen of the Ring tournament. I, f- I feel like you might be influenced by a little bit of bloodline rules there, because after all, she is family, so you never know. Never know. You, if you really want to piss people off, that's you how want, you do it. And you want to punch? You want to punch up that like that whole bloodline thing? Yeah. Let's, let's, do get some the, let's get some of the women involved too. All right. So moving yeah. on to the men. Oh, what do we have in the men? Hold on. I don't think that that actually is going to be Nia Jax, to be honest with you. I personally think that this is an opportune time to have Jade win this whole thing. And somehow during the whole thing of, of winning it, it ends up where Jade has to beat Bianca Belair. Say, let's say that happens. And let's say that uh, the two of them have to face off at some point. And Jade ends up pulling up the victory, and that plants that little seed down the road to start to turn Jade heel. Because, I mean, let's face it, she's got heel written all over her. I feel like that's the road that you can already, it's already seen and laid out. And I feel like that's kind of Vince-ish, a bit of Vince-ish booking. Now, there's some smart booking to that. I'm not saying that it's not smart, but I think that's very Vince-ish booking. And I think we're in a new day and age, my friend. I think surprises are the key here. Interesting. Interesting. Well, it's okay to be wrong, and one of us will be. All right. Moving on to the guy side of the quarterfinals. You've got uh, Carmelo Hayes and Randy Orton. You've got Tama Tonga and L.A. Knight. Jay Uso and Ilya Dragunov. And Kofi Kingston taking on Gunther. Oh, there's your winner right there. Kofi? Gunther. Oh. No, Gunther's going to win this. He has to. Yeah. I, I feel like this is what they're prepping him up. They took a title off him just to put another title on him, right? It's just a different kind of title. The One's a belt and one's an actual name title. But yeah, he he will be the king of the ring, and it gives him a lead into the Bash in Berlin or whatever the fuck they're calling it um, in Germany coming up later in the summer where he's going to have that title. If that's the only thing that he goes into a match with Cody or goes into a match with somebody with, that's a pretty good title to carry in there. Yeah, I think you're right because I think you have to do something to build him up to that point to where he's deserving of another title. Yep. Losing the title, you know, the way that he did or whatever. I think you I think this is a perfect opportunity to rebuild him up, right? Yep. Have him win the king or the ring and move on and win the, it. the king or the ring. Let's just have him. <laughs> what oh shit, you just made me think of something. What? How come our truth isn't in this King of the Ring thing? Well, he is in spirit. Or will he show up? I think that'd be the greatest thing that we ever find out, ladies and gentlemen. You know, after all of this time, now you think about this and the money that the Saudis are paying for this, there has to be surprises. And we talked about this a little bit off air, right? And we both kind of agree that this is an absolutely perfect time for them to bring out Uncle Howdy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's great. And I think that the bigger story is to find out that our truth is actually Uncle Howdy. 
No. All right. Well, it's time. I think it's time for us to take a bit of a break. I I would like to to get your feelings, though, again, on Becky Lynch potentially leaving the WWE and going over to to AEW. Do you think that that's a move that could spark interest in AEW, not only for a quick ratings hit, or is this the thing that could ignite an actual war? I think that, well, okay, so here's what I would believe if I saw that. You want to know what I would believe if I saw that? I wouldn't believe that her contract is up and she was sailing over there no what i believe is that shad khan actually sold the company to the to tko behind his son's back that's what i would believe i think there's more of a chance of that happening of becky showing up with the belt and calling herself the man over there using all the wwe trademarks without a little care in the friggin' world because it's all owned by wwe now no, oh, let's hope that doesn't happen. I want yeah. AEW to stick around and have its own little breath of life. Uh, I think it's going, it's on life support right now. Yeah. It's being held together by old super glue, but hopefully they, they, they get their act together and we get out of the all in pay per view and it's everything is, you know, bells and whistles. I also think that her showing up there would take away from the one lead big, huge story that they've got right now. Oh, what's that? Uh, they're doing something over there with the EVPs and uh, beating everybody up. And uh, they're doing e- EVP NWO, I believe. That doesn't sound like very, like, yeah, that doesn't yeah, sound yeah. like a lot of fun. ENVP WNO. Well, here's the thing it is, as long as Eddie Kingston's not involved in the storyline, I'm happy. Well, um, I've got some news for you on that front, then, Brady. Uh, it's time to take a break. Okay. 